Hey, so I'm Tina with Sid Happens Dog Training and Behavior, and today I'm going to do the hashtag uh, my one question. We actually had three questions this week, so I want to thank you guys for taking the time to ask your questions. That probably means this post will be a long one. So the first one comes from my friend Rob, who's asking about his son's one-year-old black lab puppy, who they often are trying to take for a walk. Um, and suffice it to say, it's like walking a John Deere tractor. She pulls like a freight train, which is excellent if you're mushing or scajoring, but not so great if you're trying to walk through the neighborhood. So he wanted to know um, how to avoid rotator cuff surgery. Um, one of the things that I would say is um, equipment matters, right? If you can't, you cannot teach a dog to walk politely on a leash with a retractable leash, because the way retractable leashes work is the dog gets more leash by, by pulling. Um, and so even though you have the break, I don't want to hear about the break. Even though you have the break, it, it just, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's like giving your kid monster energy drink and jolt and asking them to color inside the lines. They just can't do it. And if your dog can't pay attention to you in the house on a leash, they absolutely cannot pay attention to you where there are squirrels um, on a leash. So the skill has to be taught. Um, it really does just have to do with being in relation to your owner or your handler and recognizing that they're there. Um, so crazy easy stuff to teach, it turns out. Um, but, but it starts by kind of not digging a hole of following your dog when they're, when they're pulling. Um, and so, and, and there is equipment that helps a ton. Um, I was watching video of this particular dog and a gentle leader head collar and a nice six foot leash and some hot dog would probably have epiphanal levels of difference in behavior. So um, an easy, easy way to fix it and an easy piece of equipment to transition off of because of course your long-term goal is to just walk the dog um, politely on a leash. Um, Doreen Peters, shout out to a pot cake family member, um, wants to know about dogs barking out in the yard. And my answer for this is going to be a little bit more complicated. So it depends why the barking's happening, right? Is the barking happening because the dog's bored? Are they barking because it gets you to yell at them and get them to come in? Um, are they hot? Are they uncomfortable? Are they worried? Um, are they just alerting you? It's a busy time of day or you're in a busy neighborhood. Dogs have to kind of be conditioned to what um, the conditions are in the yard. And so um, I'm assuming that this is barking in the yard. Um, barking in the house, the same thing. The dog needs to be taught what they're supposed to do in these spaces. It's, it's not difficult to do, but it is something you have to put some time and effort into. There are some really quick, easy ways to do it. For example, if you have an only dog, and um, your dog is kind of barky and whiny in the backyard. An easy fix with a fenced backyard is to take their breakfast, walk in your backyard, and like you're feeding the chickens, throw some, some of their dog food out in the yard and let them go hunt up their breakfast. This changes the dynamic for the dog because instead of going out and going, hey, where are all the things I'm supposed to be barking at? They come out and go, hey, where the heck's my breakfast? and they have to start looking for it. It's kind of like you looking for your car keys in the morning. It just changes the dynamic. Um, and then Kim Woods has asked the question about um, their, um, their new puppy is being rude to their eight-year-old dog um, and how to do that introduction so that we're building healthy relationships. And I will say um, puppies are kind of rude the same way kids are kind of rude and they don't know their own power and they're learning and exploring the world. Um, often our adult dogs are pretty tolerant and put up with a lot of poppycock. Um, however, when our dog does grumble or groan or give a dirty look or snark at our puppy, lots of people will intervene and tell the adult dog no, and that's a mistake. Um, if your adult dog is stable and kind, just a good canine citizen, and it's telling the puppy the puppy needs to stop, the puppy probably needs to stop. Um, the example I give of this is if you have multiple kids, right? The younger is pestering the older one to play with them. The older one, let's say, is doing their homework. You'll overhear that conversation. The older one will be saying like, hey, I need to do my homework. I'll play with you later. And the little one tends to kind of persist. Well, if we don't rescue them, if we don't jump in and, and say to that older child like, hey, good job for like doing your homework and telling your brother to leave you alone, 
And if we don't say to the little one, like, hey, leave your sibling alone. She told you she's doing her homework and that she'll play with you later. Well, then we're part of the problem when it escalates. So learning how your dog signals that, like, your adult dog, like, hey, I've had enough, making sure your puppy's getting enough sleep. Um, they won't pay attention to signaling if they're overtired. So if your puppy isn't paying attention to your signaling, that's like, hey, could you not bite me so hard? Or, hey, could you not jump on me? Or, hey, maybe I don't want you in my mouth. Um, if they're not listening to you, they're probably not listening to the other dog either. And those are kind of good indications that um, the puppy is overtired. Additionally, one of the things I do, so instead of just telling you what not to do, right? Ha! It's four o'clock. Um, in addition to, to telling you what not to do, um, I often use a tether with puppies. This way, the adult dog, the kids, mom and dad, um, know where the puppy's gonna be and how far the puppy can reach. And we can work on like, hey, if you get too amped up or aroused or you bite too hard or you jump up, the thing that you wanna play with moves away. So it's a really beautiful cause and effect. If you jump on me, and I don't want to be jumped on, I just move away and I stay away from you. Um, puppies pretty quickly learn how that works. They'll yell at first, um, but they eventually learn that if they want the kitty to come over and play with them, or they want the adult dog to come over and play with them, they have to be polite and sweet, or that adult dog's not going to really want to engage. So um, those are our three hashtag my one questions this week. One from Rob, one from Doreen, and one from Kim. I want a crazy thank you all for reaching out and asking your question, like big brave you. Um, hopefully I didn't mock and ridicule you too badly. Um, and um, please, if you have questions, like respond to this, uh, this video or any, any post on the Facebook page with hashtag my one question, and then next week I'll answer your questions on that. If it's something serious, by the way, like if it's something worrisome, I do hop on and communicate with you off camera because um, I don't want you, obviously, to like wait a week. So to all the daddies, happy Father's Day and enjoy um, your weekend. We should celebrate you and most of you will probably be celebrating doing whatever your wife tells you you're going to do to enjoy, <laughs> to enjoy your Father's Day. Try to get something in for you. <laughs> all right. So hashtag. My one question. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.